strip. He looks into and reviews our operating procedures and ensures all meetings follow proper protocols. With that introduction, it just gives me great pleasure to give the floor to Larry Lyons, the power of parliamentary procedures. We are recording this session. If there's any objections, please switch your camera off. Danny, Q. Yeah. Good. Okay. Mr. District Director, DLT team that are here, fellow Toastmasters, and I see we have people from outside of our own district, District 91 here too, and you're all very welcome. And tonight I'm going to give an overview of parliamentary procedures. And what I will be looking at is focusing mainly on the upcoming conference and the council meeting. However, I will slightly touch on club officer meeting, club uh, meetings coming up in your elections and also area and uh, division touch slightly on them and the voting procedure and a bit about motions as well because I think it needs a bit of explanation for some and it can be uh, tricky enough. So before we move on, we have a poll and Garrod, will you launch two polls, please? One is in relation to meetings if you had any meetings this year. One. Yes, please. Okay, so did your area hold a council meeting in the last year? 50% said no. 23% one meeting, 13% had two meetings and 13% were greater than two. Okay. Second one. Okay. Uh, did your club hold an executive committee meeting in the last year? 7% didn't. 17% had one meeting. 77% had greater than two. And no respondents had no. Said none. Sorry. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Have you got that? Yeah, that's good. Okay, you can. I'm going to share my screen now at this stage and get the ball rolling. Okay. Now, the. the, the the, the polls really are interesting, and especially for the, the area ones that some people had no uh, council meetings at all, and decisions are being made without consulting with members of the councils. And you're depriving people of an opportunity to make decisions at area level. And also at club level, it's important that executive uh, committees have regular meetings so that you, you can monitor your club's progress. And I think uh, the lesson to be learned from hopefully after all of this, you will have a better understanding and you will understand your role and how you can maybe influence your presidents or your area directors. Because as a, as a member of a, of a committee, a majority of a committee can seek a meeting. And that's very important to know. It's not just left up to the president. So anyways, on we go here, the powers of parliamentary procedure. And this is the agenda for tonight. You can see there for yourself. We, we, we're going through a fair bit of stuff. Some stuff I'll be just skimming through because time is precious. And I think with the upcoming election, Garrod's presentation will be very important. So here we have the, the role of the parliamentarian. And that they are the basic uh, duties that I have for the year ahead. I'm new in the role myself, so I'm learning as I go along and uh, researching. And that's a great thing about this, putting on this training tonight. I'm researching, I'm looking up and uh, finding information in, in amazing places. So. And why do we have parliamentary procedures? Now, I have seen meetings with parliamentary procedures and uh, sometimes they get out of hand. But if you hadn't got any parliamentary procedures, 
I think to be mayhem really. So there are the main reasons there, as you can see. And the important thing here is the majority decided was high, however, the minority voice is heard. And that's very, very important. And I would encourage people to speak up at meetings, even though you might be against something, because you often learn a lot from people that are against a motion or an opinion. And your voice, if you're against something, could cause an motion to be actually amended for the betterment of the club or the organization. But I think order, keeping order and showing respect for others is very, very important too. One person at a time speaks. And I've seen meetings where people are cutting in in front of each other and it's not very respectful for the person that's speaking. There's a, there's a show of hands if you want to speak and via Zoom, you can put it in chat and we'll have observers at meetings uh, keep an eye who's next to speak. So that's the proper way to do it, really. So then you know, I go on to how is order achieved? Well, the chairperson really is a, is a controller in general, the traffic light controller, really. Very, very important role to play. And a chair has to be very firm. Firm but fair. But at times, the chairperson has to lay down the law and move a meeting on if it's getting out of hand. And I think it's, a, it's very important prior to any meeting for the officers to meet before a meeting begins and plan their agenda and strategy for the meeting that's coming up. And also to consider where there might be some jam, jam logs. And the most important people to a chairperson, when the, when, because chairing a meeting is not easy. It can be quite tough and, and concentration levels are unbelievable. Because I've been chair of a branch of uh, FORSA here in Ireland. And I've been through, through some very tough meetings and your, absolute, your energy is absolutely sapped afterwards. So you just pay respect to the chair, but his officers or her officers are vital that they're rowing behind them at a meeting if he's in trouble and support him and support the organization and, and, and what it has achieved. So that's very important, the pre-meeting before the main meeting by the club or by your club officers outside of Toastmasters. This learning tonight is about not alone Toastmasters, but outside, so you can bring the learnings on this out, out into your own workplace or your club or organization. And there, one item at a time, that is crucial. I've seen at times where people jump from one thing to another. Stay on what you are, stay focused, and we'll all get out of the room in good time. And these are some voting terminologies you will also come across. And there you have the majority really you have to be an active individual member. You could have a, a member in a club fully paid up, but not active. And what I mean by that is they must be coming to meetings on a regular occasion. They must be taking part in the educational program. Otherwise they have no vote at club level. A majority then of the club executive is a quorum. Whereas it's different for the council meeting, it's going to be one third. At club level, everybody has one vote and no voting by proxy. There's no voting by proxy this year for the council meeting either because it's online. There is more voting terminology here. Secret ballot, that will be decided at the start of the meeting. And then you have this anonymous one there where you, you just move things on by a show of hands maybe, or it's agreed that we, yet yeah, everything is in order there. The quorum then, we'll talk about that later on when Pauline is doing her piece. And now proxy, no proxies, but I'll, I'll just have it in there for yourself when you, when you, when you uh, get the slides, you can have a check there when, because there'll probably be a proxy for the international uh, council meeting. So where, that's where you hand over your voting rights to somebody else if you can attend the meeting. And when may you be called on to vote? <clears throat> you have regular meetings, special meetings, the executive meetings, the area council meetings. So some people had no council meetings. And I, I've heard that from certain areas, that no meetings at all. So how were decisions made? Who's making them? Divisional Council meeting and, and of course the district one. 
So there, who can vote? As I said, you have to be an active member, number one. And your club must be in good standing as well. Pay it up. And there's a bit different time. The president can, of course, at his club, barrier district council, the VP, club barrier district council, as well, the v, VPM. Now he has no vote at, at district council or she, but they have at club and area level. The area director then, there's all the times they can vote and the same with the divisional director and the, the executive committee. Of course, they, they are members of their own club, so they have a vote at their own club. <clears throat> so they might be in the area as well, they might be in division council and the DEC industry council. Now, the, the, the great one, great debate, a motion. <clears throat> so a motion really is a formal proposal by a member in a meeting that the assembly takes certain action. And motions can be daunting at start and it can be off-putting and you're wondering how do, how do motions work and all that so we'll, we'll have a, a quick look at motions and how they how how they can affect a meeting so really truly a main motion really is what brings business before a council meeting a main motion so you normally you submit your motions well in advance of a council meeting the closing date could be four to five weeks from the actual meeting itself because they have the motions have to be looked at to see a day in order. So motions may come in and, and are not in order, so they will be rejected. And we have no motions for district council this year, which is surprising really, because at our last meeting, there was plenty of questions being asked. But I think the feeling from that was that people didn't understand. That's the feedback I got that they didn't know much about motions. So, a main motion brings business before the assembly. But of course, at the meeting, uh, at the council meeting, some motions may come out of what we're discussing in relation to budgets, etc. So a main motion really, it needs a seconder. A motion on its own is not validated, it's only relates to one person. So to make it valid, to validate it needs a seconder. So the chair then repeats the motion. It's open for debate. And then, uh, all going well, you proceed with a vote and the uh, results are announced. But now, see down here, uh, this, is, this is a chart in two parts and I didn't want to break it up into any more. I don't know, it might be hard to read it, but I didn't want to really distort it too much more. So this is the main original main motion down here, number 13. But any of these motions can result from that main motion. For instance, a subsidiary motion in relation to the main motion, that means you could postpone it indefinitely. If, if for instance, it wasn't uh, kosher or if people didn't feel like if the floor, but this, but you must, you cannot bring in another motion unless, if this goes to debate, you cannot bring in other motions really. You could amend it, you, the motion could be amended actually as well. Say for instance, after a bit of discussion, it was decided that, um, maybe the wording if it was worded some other way it might suit the situation better so you can or it can be referred back to a committee for consideration you could ask the mover of the motion is it okay if it will refer it back to a committee for further discussion it could be postponed for a certain time so there's all the various things that can to can that can, that can occur in relation to one actual the main motion so Sometimes you might have to take a recess. Things are so heated, a bit of time out to, to, to interrupt the meeting. Or you might have to adjourn the meeting. These, these all take precedent over this one here, over the main motion. So any of them there um, can take precedent over the main motion. So really that chart is important. It's a good, it'll tell you here then if a seconder is needed, if it's, if it's debatable. It's, et cetera, et cetera. And this is over here then is um, what's required to get it uh, uh, voted on. Sometimes it might be a majority, sometimes it might need, meet, need two thirds of the, 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 the meeting uh, quorum to, uh, to decide what way the motion will go. And these ones, the, these are incidental, they can come in anytime. Here you have, a, you might reconsider a motion from before bring it back for review. Uh, sometimes you might uh, consider 
looking at a motion, if it's a very long, if it's a report, for instance, you might look at it, go through it paragraph by paragraph. Or if you have a motion with maybe two questions in it, you could divide it up and take a, a vote on each of them. So I leave it, it's good to refer back. So, so how do you amend a motion? Well, they're basically the, the rules in relation to amending a motion. You can change the wording of it. You can strike out certain parts of it. You're allowed a maximum of two amendments. And uh, if accepted, it goes to debate. And if rejected, the main motion goes to debate. So I'll just show you in relation to, here's an example of an amendment. There's a, the first motion. I move that the Zoom training be provided for executive officer in December. So that's uh, the, the main motion. And then somebody comes up with an amendment to that. So there's your first amendment. Replace executive officers by all active members. And then somebody else pipes up and they decide, well, I don't like the look of uh, December. I'd rather be doing it in June. So I move that Zoom training be provided for all active members in the month of June. So there you have two amendments. So what you do then is you, 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 you move on this second amendment. It's the first one to be moved. You don't go back here to this main motion. You have to work on this second amendment. So if that, if, if that passes, it's, uh, this, that's the, the motion that will, be, will move, go forward. But if it's rejected, you go back to this first amendment and you take a vote on this one. And if this passes, you're, you're, it's the one that's accepted. But if it fails, you go right back to your main motion. The one that was first move, uh, put on the, uh, up for discussion. So these two fail, you go back here. If this one, sorry, if this one is passed, you, just the one that goes through. So that's the way the motion works. So sometimes you might like to raise a point of order. If you think the rules are being breached in, the, in relation to a discussion that's going on. Now, time management within any meeting is very, very important. And I think we have, we have been guilty of this a few times this year, but I will be cracking the whip from now on. And for the district council meeting coming up, it's going to be three hours long. So we want to move things along in a, in a, in a sharp and, and timely manner. And the chairperson has a very important motion that he can, can introduce, and that's limited time of debate. And that's very important. Sometimes certain motions, because of their importance, they might get extended time because it might be a major decision that the committee have to make. But sometimes a chairperson has the power to limit time of debate. And I think that's a great, great uh, weapon to have in, his, in their artillery. And sometimes people like to talk for the sake of talking and introduce that and just get the backing of the assembly to do so. So there's our district executive committee, all the people involved. And down here, you have your area and division directors immediate past director and the district council then here all the, the the executive again there and their division and area directors and the club presidents and and bp they're the ones that make up the quorum now coming up to our council meeting they're the you're you're the important people there and also at the dc or the district council meeting myself and uh, pauline thrown in there as well at the very end. <laughs> so this is our upcoming dis district conference. It's on in May the 22nd and 23rd. So I, we're all nearly Zoom fatigued at this stage and re really looking forward to uh, the week uh, next uh, Friday fortnight, Saturday fortnight. So that's a very important date and we all can put our feet up after that. So what goes on there, you have elections, you have contests, and you have workshops. And there's a great lineup in fairness to the team that's involved. And on Friday night, you have your candidate showcase. So they have all submitted their uh, intention to run. That has to be done seven days out, closing date for anyone to run from the floor as well. 
So then you get to cast your vote and that's, uh, it's a great honor to be able to cast your vote. And I would encourage everybody to come along and register. It's an honor to be a VP, it's an honor to be a president. So don't waste your vote, make it count, make it count in the district. Now the candidates, if, there's a, if, a, if there is a contest for a position, the, uh, the candidates can nominate an observer to go into the breakout room where the votes will be tallied. So they have to do that and give the names to the district director of the observer they have chosen. The election then will be completed for one position. You have to wait until that's uh, announced and then you move on to the next election. So now we have Pauline McCabe who will talk about credentials. Pauline is from the Mullingar Club. She's VPE, or no, she's Sergeant at Arms, Secretary Sergeant at Arms. Am I right there, Pauline? No, I'm Assistant Treasurer. Sorry. Oh, Assistant Treasurer and Sergeant at Arms of Mullingar. She's a former area director. And one thing I like about Pauline, I like her humor, her one liners are classic. So over to you, Pauline, on that Thank one. You. Thank you very much, Larry. Welcome, everybody. The role of the credentials chair is to deliver the credentials report at the district council meeting. And as well as that, I need to establish if there is a quorum present. The quorum consists of the presidents, club presidents and VPEs in the district, presidents and VPEs that are in good standing themselves and the clubs need to be in good standing. The member needs to register to vote at the district council meeting via the district administrator by uh, Wednesday the 18th of May. No proxies are allowed because it's all been done online. And so what that means is you must cast your own vote. You cannot get somebody to pass it on your behalf. Some people have registered and have put themselves down as doing two roles, maybe president and VPE, but I have to make a list. I have to check it twice. I have to compare it to the up-to-date officer list from Toastmasters International. So I will know whether your president VPE both or none at all. I have to double check those lists. A member is entitled uh, president VPE to a maximum of two votes. They could be dual presidents, dual uh, vice presidents uh, education, or they could be president VPE, but they get a maximum of two votes. If they're also a member of the district executive committee, they get another vote, but that vote for the district executive does not make up the quorum for the meeting. So that's really it. The big thing is no proxies allowed. I cannot state that enough to people. So I'm going to ask, encourage you all to register to vote. To register early if you have not already done so. To encourage others to register. As Larry said, it is a privilege to vote at the district council meeting and you are helping to shape the future of your district. So please use your vote. Back to you, Larry. Thank you, Pauline. So before I go on to the election, election platform system, and I just want to summarize, and I, I think I was showing uh, my notes and my slides as well there, I just after seeing chat. But uh, to sum up there really, at the moment, club elections should be going on. And you should be given a month's notice in relation to your elections. And that's very important. And follow the protocol in relation to setting up an agenda and going through the proper protocols. Patricia O'Reilly had a wonderful presentation earlier on in March, as I said. So most of you might have that recording that, that I registered for that. So have a look at that or look it up on the Toastmasters website. Uh, Area director me, uh, council meetings, I'm afraid, it, it, they should have been submitted two weeks before, the names of the area directors submitted two weeks before the council meeting. So time has gone by there. And um, it's important that if there's any incoming area directors here, 
that you have at least minimum two meetings per year. Bring in your council members, your VPE, your, your president, your VPE and your VP membership and discuss the area and what you can do. And maybe joint up thinking between four or five clubs in an area is important. And how can they help each other out? Because it was a difficult year in relation to get membership and uh, the likes. So I think it's important that we have meetings. And I think that at the club executive should have meetings every month at the beginning of the year. And thereafter, then you can stretch it out maybe 68 weeks. But I think at the start of your year, you need to have meetings on a regular basis. Plan your year, plan, the, plan your goals, and plan open nights as well. And uh, that's about it from that side of things. So we're going over to now to Garrod in relation to the election platform. Garrod Murphy is one busy man. And there was a, a topic at the contest last week in relation to three attributes of a good friend. And I've never met this man really in person, but I've got to know him over Zoom. And he's a guy that you, you can always, he'll always, he'll always have his back. He's always willing to help out. And he loves a game of golf. So them three things alone, <laughs> I think uh, he's one great guy. So over to you, Gerald. Thank you. Thank you very much, Larry. Uh, thank you very much for the warm, warm welcome. Uh, I just want to say what an honor it is to work alongside yourself and, and Pauline on this project. And thank you to Danny and Daniel for giving us the opportunity here this evening. Mm -hmm. So my, jo my job is to help translate what Larry and Pauline have uh, described this evening to help translate that into action or converted into action and how are we going to do that it is through electronic voting so i have a i have a poll and before i launch it i just want to say i put out a little teaser at 10 to 7 and most people that registered for this meeting here tonight would have got an email so if i could ask uh, the zoom master martin to launch the poll please uh, it's just a little poll. In the upcoming election, we <coughs> plan to use a certain software. I'm correct, uh, Garod, in saying it's, it's poll two. Poll two, please, Martin. Yeah. Thank you. So just for a little interaction, I just wonder who was reading their emails or who knows what system we are run, going to run the election on. So if we give it another 30 seconds. And don't go for the funny answer. I did put one funny answer in there. If you do know, put in the correct answer. But maybe I'll give you a clue. It's not the postal vote. I'm okay. So thanks, Martin. So how, how did am we I, get on? Am I on the right poll? I think I'm wrong. Do you know how motions work? That's no, sorry, yeah, it should have yeah, been. Yeah. You can run that been. one, alright. You can run that one. Well, I've run it now, and yeah. uh, sorry, sorry, Grod, I went for number two, but I, it should have yeah. been number three, shouldn't it? Okay, thanks, Martin. Three. Do we want the result of that one? Yeah, please. Do you know how motions work? Uh, yeah. Fifty-four percent yes, uh, three percent no, and forty-three percent some idea. So, okay. thanks, okay. Martin. Uh, if we can launch poll two, that the third poll, then please. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yes, what software are we using at the upcoming district one? Is that correct? That's correct. Thanks, Martin. Sorry about that. No. Okay. And I've given a big clue. I've given you one of the answers that it's not. It is not the answer. <laughs> So give another maybe 20 seconds because I don't want to eat into too much of my time. Okay, I think we, we'll close off there now. Okay. And can we 
display the answer, Martin, or call it out. I don't see it here in front of me as a host. So if you wouldn't mind calling out the result. Election body, 12%. Google Forms, 15%. Survey Monkey, 0%. Election Runner, 50%. Postal Vote, 3%. And no idea, 21%. <laughs> very, very good. Well, 50% of the people here got it correct. So well, well done. So the system that we will be using will be Election Runner. And there was a little bit of a clue in my renaming uh, ER underscore MON. It's not an emergency room monitor. It's Election Room Monitor. So just go into it. So election runner is a system that can be used to create elections for your school or your organization. It's, it's very handy, it's, it's automated, and uh, effectively it can be set up for very large numbers of uh, uh, voters. It ranges, you can range from a small amount up to into your thousands. So it's a system that is very flexible and suits our Toastmasters election quite, it's a very, very good fit. And another good thing is that it is available on any type of app and there is a mobile app that, that goes along with it. Uh, it's primarily e an email based voting system. Now, just before I go to the next screen, I would advise that when, you, when it comes to the election, those that are, are voting to operate two devices, it makes thing, things handy that you can have Zoom, Zoom on one screen, or uh, you can have run election room on a laptop, a tablet, or a phone, or another device of your choosing. It just makes it handy that you're not having to leave, go between screens or look in the background for your emails, as there'll be a limited time frame uh, to actually get your vote in. And this evening I did, yeah, I've, I did send out and I do see replies to my uh, elections. And if you want to stay on after this training, I'll share, I'll share the results just to let you know how you got on. So Election Runner uh, allows you to set up ballots. So this is one particular, particular example I did as a test for fun, which allows me to put, put three items on the ballot. This time I choose Battle of the Fruits. So I went with apple, banana, and pear. Uh, it's ele election runner allows you to add profile pictures, but for the actual election proper, we won't be running uh, with the pictures. It will just be text. Uh, th those candidates' names will, be, will appear uh, alphabetically on the list going downwards. Uh, you basically if there is an election with more than uh, if there's an election with more than two candidates it may require that it goes to a second or third count and this is quite easily possible in election runner election runner allows you to duplicate your ballot and on the duplicated ballot it's just a case of removing an eliminated candidate so setting up the ballots in election runner is very straightforward and this pretty much is what you will see is what will trans transpire in your email when the actual election is launched and you receive your email. Uh, over the course of the election, it's undetermined yet how many how many votes you will have to receive by email, but each each election where there's each and any election where there's more than one candidate will have to uh, be run through election runner. Okay, so as Larry and Pauline mentioned, uh, what we are trying to encourage everybody is to register uh, for the election and to register their vote. And it's it basically, uh, we need, uh, as Pauline mentioned, Pauline will be determining, uh, depending on what positions you are in the club off the Toastmasters International roster, club officer roster, if you're a VP, or a president or an area director or a dual VP or dual president or a president VP, you, you may be entitled to a certain amount of votes. The minimum amount of votes would be one. The maximum amount of votes anyone can carry into the election is three. 
a maximum amount any club officers can carry in is two, with the additional uh, district officer role on top. If you're an area director or, a, or higher, you would be entitled to an extra vote. It's very easy adaptable. So from the registration page, we can produce a list of names. And once the number of votes is worked out, we can create a spreadsheet which will come into Election Runner. And what you're seeing in front of you is just a, a, random, a randomly generated list uh, where you have the name of the person and a, a voter ID, an email, and I've just assigned a random weight. But that is how it will, will look when the list comes into Election Runner. One thing that is very important is that on, on registration that you uh, register for, for the uh, contest, uh, sorry, re register for the business meeting on the email address that you wish to receive your vote on. Uh, some may register on a, a separate device, but would prefer an email, register for Zoom on a separate device, but would prefer their email for the vote to go to another. So it's important maybe to let us know let us know that if if you don't receive your vote or uh, you you want to change your email address to receive the vote on a on a different email, it's it's very important that you get that email on the day and not to have to go looking because again the turnaround of votes is very a very short frame time frame. Some have reported problems with spam, so again, if if a, it's a case of the email from election or goes into spam, it would be important to go, go in, look in your spam folder and mark that, mark that email as safe and, and that source. So any more emails coming in would be, uh, would be coming straight into your inbox. Other, other things to watch, watch out for are uh, the likes of Gmail. Uh, some people's setups have social and promotions folders and if, if it goes in there, you might forget to look or some people with work accounts might have email filters or auto move, uh, auto move some emails into certain folders, depending on, on the content or depending where they're coming from. So just make sure that uh, you have no filters or no auto delete or no auto move uh, in place. Or if, if you have an auto move, just make sure you know where your email is coming to. So that, that's just the set, uh, what to watch out for when it comes to the emails. Now we will run a test in advance of the business meeting. Hope, we're hoping two to three days in advance. And at the business meeting, we will run an, a test as well that day, just before we actually do the live, the live voting. What you saw just a little while ago is uh, the list of the emails. So as I said, for each voter, if we find any error or we need to add another voter at any point, election runner allows us to do that. So you, this is just how we edit a person's name and the setup. So the full name will be your name. So I'm Garrod Murphy. Uh, the voter ID, I've just uh, amalgamated the first name and the surname with an underscore in the middle. Uh, election runner will automatically generate the voter key and the number of votes carried, as I say, will be imported from the spreadsheet that Pauline, Pauline is keeping updated. So we will know that that is correct. But in the event of an error and we needed to change or edit any of those details, all possible to election runner. So it, it, coming to the live election, it will be launched in election runner, but you will need to be keeping an eye on your email when you do. Uh, you will get such an email as shown top right, an invitation to vote in the election. Uh, when I set up, ignore copy copy, but the election training session 11th of May. So when you open that email, you will come in and see a content in the email as in the bottom left hand corner. Uh, again, this is just for an example, but if like before, it will be your, your name, your first name, underscore your surname, and the voter key will be generated for you. Now you don't have to use uh, any of that detail to log into Election Runner. It's going to be set up so you automatically will be taken to the ballot. So it's saving you any time. You don't have to log in. When you get to the ballot, you can see now my ballot that was set up. That's replicated in the election. 
uh, multiple choice, but but just uh, one answer, so a single answer, so your single candidate. Once you've selected, you will submit the ballot at the bottom here in, in green. Uh, in case you have made a mistake before you submit your ballot, it will ask you, are you sure you want to uh, submit it? You may, you may say change your mind or you may have made an error. So if you cancel, you can go back and make a different choice and then go through, go through the process of submitting and just confirming again. And the next screen then will, the next will say, thank you for voting in the election, which says that your election, your vote has been cast. Uh, if you wish to keep a, keep a, a, a copy of the receipt of the, uh, the vote that you cast on, on, in, on any browser, if you, it will pop up a little dialogue with ballot receipt. If you right click on any browser, uh, you can do save as and you can save that as an image. Or if you're on a phone or a handheld device or a tablet, if you just hold down your finger on the ballot receipt, it'll give you the option to save the phone or save to the device. So once the election is over in from the election runner central, we would be looking at the results coming in in the observers room. And once the election is closed off, uh, then the results, the final results would appear. And these can be shared shared in the in the main in the observers room, but also in the main main room. And again, then it's once it's official, uh, the result can be published and downloaded. So and kept for the records. But that is the simple process of how to go through uh, election runner from the time you get your email. It's simply about six clicks and you should, you'll be able to cast your vote. So each time, each time you would repeat that same process, just voting in a different election, be it for a DLT, a DLT vote or a division director vote and all going well. That's, uh, you would receive the emails if you just make sure that you're receiving the sample ones in advance of the business meeting. And please let myself or Larry or Pauline know if you haven't or experienced any problems or you just wish to change your email to receive the vote, uh, the, the vote email on a different device. So that's, uh, that's election runner in a nutshell, uh, how it operates. So with that, thank you. Thank you for listening to me this evening. And with that, I'm going to hand back to Larry. Back to you, Larry. OK, thank you, uh, Garo. That was a good comprehensive outline of how it will work. And the feedback we're getting from other districts that have had elections, there, there, there are some difficulties. However, we're expecting to overcome a lot of them from the feedback we have got. But the important lesson, I suppose, is check your emails, check your spam and make sure you have no corporate email because uh, it may not get through. It might, it might be blocked from getting through to you. You'll have five minutes to vote. And if there's three candidates for a position, or you, 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 you only select one in the first count. Select one person and submit that vote. And the lowest of the three then will be eliminated and we'll go, it'll go back out to you again a second time with two candidates on it. And then you pick one or two and, and submit. It's not like a PR system where you um, do the PR system that, that you see in elections. This is totally different. Three candidates, you eliminate the low, lowest. But if, if number one reach, has a majority of the quorum, they're elected uh, straight away. So it's, it's we're hoping it's going to run well. Make sure you have an... Uh, the district director mentioned this during the week. Make sure you have uh, good Wi-Fi on the day. And, and, and yeah, Jared, come in there, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would recommend, Larry. I was just going to come in there with that uh, that the bandwidth in your home is protected that day. You know, and that you already have a reasonable bandwidth prior, because people can be learning different courses or other different things at that time of the day when we're kind of facilitating that at maybe about noon, that would be the time that I would be predicting that it would happen. Yeah. 
anyway, congratulations, Larry, and um, um, also to Garoud and to um, Lord, my, my head is getting tired. Um, to our credentials well, director. Thank you very much, indeed. Yeah. yeah. And Antonia wants to come in there. I have a question, probably mainly to Geroid. So in D91's uh, district council meeting, we had a problem, uh, probably because a couple of people either didn't understand the credential system or didn't trust it. And uh, I won't go into the details, but I notice on the initial form, it's where it confirms your details, your name, your ID for the system for election runner. There was a number and it said one to 999,999. Now, I had three votes. Could that number have been three? Or, or does it always say one? Because the point was these people were saying, well, how do I know I've been given two votes? Where's the proof? <laughs> They wanted to see a spreadsheet and, you know, that's GDPR. You can't do that, showing everybody's names and how many votes they've been given. So how do you know? How would you just have to trust the credentials people, Pauline, <laughs> that they have done their job and double checked it and double checked it? Very, very much so, actually, Antonio. I really rely on Pauline that she's done her work. And we discussed this already at two previous meetings that what will be allocated to members that can vote at the council will be will be made known to them. And, you know, th then they will either have three, they will have three votes or two votes if they're president and a, another officer. Does that answer your question in any way? Well, it was more about, could it be confirmed on that? initial form that you get from election runner to show no. that yeah, Lord. Yeah. yeah i, I Lord. looked into that antonia and it's mm -hmm. it's one little it, what would you say a, a little drawback of election runner that when your the ballot is sent out on the email it doesn't say you have x amount of votes like one vote two vote three votes so it's kind of would be relying relying on them knowing that if they're a president and a district officer and area right. director that they have two votes but but again from our side of things for our polling side of things that it it would be scru uh, scrutinized and double checked to make sure that each person has a correct number of votes okay. yeah. yes um, the, 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 yeah there's just one go, go yeah. on polling yeah yeah, sorry, I will be checking it and double checking it. I have the up to date officer list from Toastmasters International. I will go down through it. I will put it in name order so I can see if you're a VPE and uh, of one club and president of the other. I can double check that you're weighted with two votes. But going back to what Garrow said a while ago, is there something that is kind of missing in election runner that it may not? give the people the appropriate votes and inform them and their That's choice right. to vote for maybe different candidates get old yeah, well it, that's election runner that's you uh, if you've got three votes you can't split them on election runner uh, you're getting yeah. into more complicated territory if you try that they may need to elect two emails to log, log on and give yeah, uh, so you forgot means. one, two, or three votes. You got to put that to the one candidate that you're going for. To the one candidate you, yeah. you'd be going yeah. for with election. That's the, that's the way we're going to operate it. You give your three votes to your preferred choice. Yeah. One, oh, you'd be only voting for one person, even if there's three on the on the ballot paper. Mm. Your three votes go to one person. Mm. Mm. And then uh, it's it, that's all you can do. That's the way. Unfortunately, if we're if we're in a hotel, it would be much easier. And I would ask people to have patience on the day as well. And you'll get that five minutes. Make sure your system is clear to receive the email. Check it straight away. Check spam and get back uh, your vote in as quick as possible. Because and there'll be, there'll be no voting. And there's a question there in relation to have we been asked to vote yet? There'll be no voting until the day until the council meeting on Saturday the 22nd. It will start, it, can, it will start our meeting 
the candidate's name will be announced by the chair. The voting will be launched. We'll elect, if there's a, say if there's three people at the start, that there's, a, there's someone opposing them. We will run that first election first, get the result back. We'll have a bit of music in between while we're waiting we have for that five minutes. Someone can uh, do a tap dance or something. And once we have one election decided, then we will move on to the next one. You cannot do any business while you're waiting, waiting for that uh, election result. And that's why it's crucial that five minutes is used, is used uh, to a good effect. I think in, in one area, they went 20 minutes in between uh, voting. Like that's crazy stuff. So we just have to be, accept the situation we're in. I, I would appreciate, uh, ask for that much. And go with the five minute slot, get your uh, vote in as quick as possible. And look, if you're not receiving your email within that five minutes, if, if we're over the quorum, we'll be okay. May I add also, Larry, uncontested candidates, the administration officer, Philip O'Brien, will cast one vote to mm -hmm. secure that position. Yeah, that's correct. Yes, one candidate. There's no need to go through a voting procedure. Yeah. Uh, the chair will ask him to cast one, one vote into the records, and that will be done that way. It's only There's only about three or four elections. Okay. And there might be, a, if there's a motion, that could be a different thing, but we have no motions so far. And uh, The motions have closed down since the 19th of April, and that concludes that business. Yeah. Have we been, uh, have we been uh, invited to register? The, yes, the link has gone out already. Uh, yeah, it has gone out a few times, actually. So keep an eye on your mail. You'll be asked to uh, register as a council member. And... Uh, Keep an eye on your mail, as I say, and uh, register as soon as possible as well. That's very important to register as soon as possible to give Pauline a chance to get her paperwork done, get it in order. And I would ask that as well, that you all go home, uh, leave here this evening or tomorrow morning and check your registration, send it in to us. Mm -hmm. And it makes our job that much easier and that would be very much appreciated. Thank you. Larry, also, if I might say, uh, our agenda will go out next week and the minutes of our previous district council meeting will be happening there too. Okay, Martin Farrell let his hand up there, yeah. I had, uh, thank you very much, Larry, um, and thank you for a great presentation. You've, you've almost answered all of my questions, but just to get confirmation, because I'm, while I don't have a vote, I want to talk to people that do have a vote, which is what we were asked to do. And... Mm -hmm. So, so number one, you have to be, it's live on the day on Saturday. So, so you've got to be present and there at the time. Yeah. yeah. And number, number two then, and uh, I'm, I'm not uh, in any of the positions that will have a vote. Can I confirm then that the people that do have the president, VPE and, um, and membership, that they will get emails to that effect, Pauline? Is that, they will get emails inviting them to register. Is that correct? It is the club president and VPE, just two people in the club. Club president VPE, and I, I remember that when I was president, yeah. <laughs> getting it, that, but I'm just confirming they will get the invitation to register for their yeah, vote. They should have received one already. All right. They've, they've, they've received two already. Yeah. Okay, okay. Nikita. Thanks. Thanks. Right. Nikita, next. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm one of the things that's I've noticed concerning email that comes from District 71, and I'm not on the, actually getting, I don't have a, I'm a candidate, but I don't have a vote on the council. Uh, the, but my observation is that emails tend to go into spam even if they're rescued. And I'm wondering if uh, the district has set up the sending records in the domain registration system that allow uh, the emails to get through. Your, your emails, I would suggest when you, when you get an email from T Toastmasters D71 or whatever, that you put it into your contacts uh, list and it will come straight into your own email. Then sometimes you go to spam if it doesn't recognize, uh, if, it doesn't, if, if, if your, your account doesn't recognize the email. It, it's, I, to do, it's to do yeah. with the permitted sender framework that each domain name has to be registered to be able to send out uh, emails without the, from the services like 
uh, constant contact. Can you uh, come in on that, Elizabeth, or can you throw any light on it? Um, <clears throat> information regarding um, the election is sent from the admin manis admin manis the administration manager, not from public relations. So the admin would have to comment on that. But what I can say from a, from a general perspective is that if it goes up by constant contact, then the chances are some of them may well go to spam. So I think you'd have to check your spam folder uh, routinely or find a way to um, make it like not go to spam. One thing about spam is when you go into spam, I got an email there lately and I went into spam and there was a question, report this as not spam. And I'd done that and my email disappeared. So don't do that. Just uh, accept it in spam and, uh, and uh, vote there, register. And then you can press that button and get rid of it. But, well, uh, Mr. Chair, Larry, you know, with regard to the email, mm -hmm. the, the requirement of the email is the email you registered with Toastmasters. And that's the email that Pauline has. Mm, okay. Yeah. And that's the one that will be distributed. You know. Okay, well, um, do you know the recording in relation to Patricia O'Reilly? Can that be sent out to people? Uh, Danny? Or PR or that, Danny would, yeah. No, there's, there's been a request here for it. Could it go back? Could it go out to people that have registered here today or no? Patricia's. Yeah, yes, it can. Yeah, Patricia's. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But it is on the YouTube district site. Okay. Already. So, but we can send it out as well, yeah. Great. Yeah. Larry, uh, you have questions also from Bernie Wilson. Bernie, yeah, come in there, Bernie. Yeah, Larry, it's a very simple question. It's about registering to vote. I have got an email to register to meeting registration. Is that the same as voting registration? Yes, the council meeting. Yes, that's the one. Yeah, so, yeah, so you don't have, it doesn't say voting registration, it says meeting registration, yeah. so it's the same yeah. thing. That's great. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank, yeah. You. Yeah. thank you. Thank you very much. That's, that's a very good point, Pauline, uh, or Bernie, mm. sorry. We should just emphasize that <clears throat> it's both meeting registration and voting also. We'll send that out in our next email with the agendas and other different items. The okay. other one person that's uh, asking a question has a hand up is David Clinton. David, good evening. David. Thank you, District Director, and thank you, Larry, Pauline, and uh, Gorod, for a great presentation this evening. Just a question uh, for those that might have a dual membership and carry voting roles for the two clubs who might be a president in one and a VPE in another. I would assume that what you want them to do is to register with two different emails, but please clarify if that is the case. Hello. Yeah, sorry, David. The, mm. So you want to, is it you're saying that you want to split? Yeah, if you have a vote in one one of your clubs and you also have another vote in one of your other clubs. Uh, yeah. Because so the questionnaire what, says what <clears throat> club, um, what is your post and so on, uh, I would assume you have to register twice, do you? With two different yes. emails. What what you would have to do, it does complicate things a little bit. It is completely possible that, if, so if you had two votes and you want one for one club, one for the other, and you want you want to vote separately, just let, let us know. And basically we assign, you, you'd have election runner on two devices, so you'd get two emails uh, and two different, uh, two different choices. You can, same election and you can vote different ways and vote. But am yes. I right in saying, Carol, but, that you could ultimately register twice using two different emails, which are two different roles? Only if you want to, David. You don't have no, to. It's I only if you so. want to split your vote. No, that's right. okay. All right, that's fine. Yeah. Right. That, okay. No, you can put down, when you go into register, you can click that you've got dual roles. And I'll, I'll, I'll just check it out that you do have. But I, I would normally think, Garod, that, you know, the email that you register with and you describe and your roles are described by Pauline and she knows that, that that will be allocated to your voting potential. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The, yeah. 
but the way what David's question is splitting splitting a vote. It, yes, but it but, is it, but, it is possible doing it that way. Not well, not true election runner, but correct. It is yeah, like if you're a member of the DLT, you can put it in your registration with a different email, and then if you're a club president or a club VPE, you can do three different ways to make your vote valid, and you'll get three different emails. Then I'm sure. Yeah, you'd need, yeah, 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 if it was three votes and you wanted to vote three separate ways. As Daniel said, the past is just yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, well, the okay. only example of that would be yes or not, or three candidates, if you wanted to give, give a, each candidate a vote. A different to voting, yeah. yeah. yeah but, 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 but a simple way, I, I presume if you're going to vote for somebody and you have three votes and you have great confidence in the one person, you'll be giving them the three votes. I wouldn't. I wouldn't see a need to split them, and it, it, we'll keep it simple as possible, because the more complicated we get with three different emails, if you send, if you're, if you're a jewel, I'm a jewel. I'm a VP and a president in two different clubs. I use the one email, and Pauline is able to decipher it in from my response in relation to my reply that I have two votes, and that will be allocated to me on the on the waiting system in an election runner. Okay. I would agree with you, parliamentarian, that you keep it as simple as possible. Simple as possible is always mm -hmm. my agenda. Yeah. Right from the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. And also, mm -hmm. but we've got to give everybody a choice. Yeah, I understand that, yeah, but I, I just want, don't want people to go away from here tonight confused either. Oh, yeah. That, sure. That one, e one email is, you'll still be covered with your, with your two or three votes. With oh, three votes, yeah. Okay, I if you want to. I 100% agree with you, Larry, that from the point of view, if you have some candidate that you want to vote for, you're going to give that candidate your preferences of one, two or three votes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're, we're gone past our eight o'clock time. Uh, just to maybe if there's one or two more questions and we'll leave it at that then. And just to remember your club, your club elections are coming up. And it's very important. And uh, a question was asked at, at Patricia Riley's uh, presentation. I'll, I'll see there it's on up on the chat there for people to download her presentation. Should people be present at an election? And I reckon if you really, really want to get the position at club level, you should be there. Now, in exceptional circumstances, for some reason or another, for uh, a person may not be able to turn up on the night. But if you're serious about your job, if you're serious about your club, be there present and don't be looking for a vote from someone and you sitting at home playing snooker or playing a game of golf, by the way, or something like that, you know, so. Larry, you hit the nail on the head. It's part of the Toastmaster promise yeah. where you're asked to be on a committee or do a vote or whatever. If you don't do it, you're not in. Yeah. And I um, really request everybody to participate as best they can in their available time, in their health, mm -hmm. in their availability, etc. I would also ask a question here now. It's not a motion, by the way. Would people be interested in further uh, sessions of parliamentarian procedure? Because I'm involved with the uh, uh, Region 10. We have had a few Sunday meetings so far. And we're, we're hoping to start up a, a parliamentarian community. And we're going to have workshops and training, etc. So we'll be planning this over the next few weeks. And I think it's a very, it's a great advantage to have some knowledge. And you can go out into the workplace or your community and become a chairperson of your own club and know and understand how the process runs. And it's, it will help you in your career as well, because the two years that I was involved as chairperson and I was going up to meet, uh, representing the worker, uh, my employee or my fellow members, meeting management, and you're exposing yourself to people at the top level. So it's a great tool to have in your kit, understanding parliament, to pair, pair, uh, the procedures, how to chair meetings, how to control meetings. I had some very hairy meetings. I had to actually get rid of a guy, my right-hand man, who was who was not uh, his integrity and respect for the role. I had two difficult, three difficult years. I had to get rid of him. I, I had to turn the committee from 75% against me 
right around when where I had a full 90, 90% of the committee behind me. And I learned so much from that. And it's, it's, a, it, it's a great thing to do. It's a great to chair a, a club or, a, or an organization. And it gives you great so, so much confidence as well that you, you, nothing will fail you. Like when I was asked to do this parliamentarian role when, from the district director early in years, I thought for a minute and I said, yes, I'll take up the challenge. And even tonight, making this presentation, I'll do the next one maybe better again. I have my slides the wrong way around, I think, there at the start. So you learn from every occasion. Don't be afraid to take on a challenge. And I'm looking forward to the council meeting and meeting you all there. And I would ask you to have patience because of the system we're, um, we're working under. And it's not easy on Zoom and people are just getting fed up and we don't want the meeting to drag out as well. We have a time slot, respect that time slot and we will be sticking rigidly to it. And hopefully with your cooperation, the voting system will go very well and I have no doubt about it. And I think it was a well worth exercise doing this uh, trial run here tonight with the voting and explaining it and, and for Pauline's part. So if there's no, is there any questions before we close up? I just might make a comment. Thank you very much, Larry and your team that you've done an excellent job tonight. I think the number one thing is that you explain to people sometime in June about international elections, if you yes. might get into that at some stage or other, and then continue. I think your mission is that we need to educate, and we don't do that. We haven't done it, mm -hmm. to educate incoming presidents, VP, uh, presidents and committee about electioneering and about parliamentarian. So it's almost like a shabby thing. But I must really appreciate the, the effort that you've done tonight. It has been excellent. And as Larry said, we have a busy day on the 22nd. And as he said, I cannot say it, I'm the chairperson, but I would love all your participation to be, you know, cordial and keep it moving. We've got a time slot, we want to keep to it, and we'll honor it. And as Toastmasters, that's part of our principles. Thank you. Good night. Okay, just to uh, look at a few. Go on, just, Danny, yeah. Can I just interrupt, Larry? I just want to say a big thank you. Uh, people have appreciated the thanks for tonight. An incredibly difficult subject and quite a lot to take in. It's obviously been recorded, and in the next couple of days, we will be sending the recording out. As Larry said, Patricia's recording is in the chat. We can send that out as well if it helps. And I would like to thank Larry, Pauline and Geroy tonight for putting in such a phenomenal effort to try to help us understand what is a very, very difficult and complicated area. And, you know, you don't have to worry from the English part about voting. We're used to voting yes or no. So um, having more than one on a ballot doesn't, you know, doesn't phase us too much, Larry. So, you know, we, we used to not having proportional representation, but there you go. Um, but once again, thank you very much. If anybody just wants to stay on a little while, you know, I'm sure Larry and Geroy and Pauline are around, but that is the sort of official end for tonight. So once again, thank you, the three of you, for a very informative evening. And we shall see you all, hopefully, well, we will see you all at conference. Thank, Thank you. you.